from listing photos to video virtual tours, Matterport, floor plans, or special events in social media, hire a company that takes your services as seriously as you do. Contact us at eyesintheskies.us. Hey there, this is Andy Wyman from Wyman Legal Solutions. Thank you for attending our panel discussion, Renovate or Build New. Listen, I've spoken with hundreds of homeowners that have had renovation projects go horribly wrong. Significant cost overruns, work that's taking months too long, disappearing contractors, defective workmanship, construction liens on your home. I've seen it all, but I've identified five specific mistakes that all of those homeowners made, and I've put those five mistakes into a report titled, The Five Mistakes That Will Turn Your Dream Home Renovation Project Into a Nightmare. And as a thank you for attending today, I want to share this resource with you so that you could avoid the mistakes that those homeowners made. To get this free report, simply send an email to freereport at wymanlegalsolutions.com and a member of our team will get that report over to you. Welcome back, everyone. First things first, I would like to introduce you to our amazing panel that we have with us today. We have Andy Wyman, and he is the founder and managing partner of Wyman Legal Solutions, which is a Boca Raton law firm that specializes in construction and real estate litigation. Growing up in New York, Andy's father and grandfather were both general contractors. Construction is in his blood. That's why Andy has dedicated his career to helping property owners and contractors alike navigate their way to successful renovation and construction projects. He has been practicing law here in Florida for over 20 years and lives in Boca Raton with his wife and kids. Thank you, Andy, for being here. Thanks for having me. We have Carrie Pouliot, Senior Sales and Design Manager for Clive Daniel Home Boca, in Boca Raton. Carrie leads a team of 26 award-winning designers. She has worked as an interior designer in South Florida for the past 20 years in residential and commercial design. Hello. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy Miller has worked in the mortgage industry for 25 plus years and is currently a branch manager with US Bank in Delray Beach. Peggy specializes in new construction and construction perm lending. She is a lifetime Palm Beach County resident, graduated from FAU with a BA in political science and lives in Lake Worth with her husband, Chad, and her two sons, Brock and Kellen. Thanks, Peggy, for being here. Thanks for having me. And last but definitely not least is Ron Ellish. Ellish is a state licensed general contractor in Florida, real estate broker. Since 1979, Ron Ellish and his company, Ellish Builders, has been active builders and developers in both Palm Beach and Broward counties. Ron and his father, Moore Ellish, a builder in his own right, relocated to South Florida in 1970s from Rockland County, New York, where, grand where Ron's grandfather was also a builder. Today, Ron proudly continues the family home building tradition, which began in 1936. Wow. Ron Ellish specializes in custom single family homes and golf courses in estate communities. Some of the communities where Ellish Builders continues to build and renovate include St. Andrews, Del Air, Boca Air, Rio Poco, just to name a few. Thank you, Ron, for being here. Thrilled to be here. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Well, I am very excited today about having this conversation about renovate or build new. And I want to start off with a question, which is what is the definition of a renovation? And I think, um, you know, we're, we all are here from different industries. And so I would like to know, Andy, is there a legal definition of what a renovation is? There's really not a definition. I think that has any, any real legal significance. I just think generally it's changes and updates to an existing property. Okay. So you would say then it might change from industry to industry then? Yeah, I would think so. All right. So Peggy, from your standpoint, from a finance industry, is there a um, definition for what a renovation is? Well, at U.S. Bank, uh, for us, we designate a, res a renovation like any, it has to be at least $100,000 in upgrades or improvements. And it is determined by the um, percentage of the initial structure that's left after construction. So if it's 50% or less, it's considered a renovation. If it's 50% or more, it's considered a new build. Wow, that's that's very enlightening. And I, 
guess with Ron, I mean, you're the builder. So I would love to hear your standpoint. So I look at it a little differently. Okay. <laughs> um, a new build is if you're starting from scratch. There's nothing there. Okay. So a lot of the homes we do that are older, we actually demolish them, bring them down, nothing left, sand, and then we start from scratch. A renovation is you leave something, okay? And that could be a wall, which doesn't really make sense. <laughs> and um, we're just renovating the home. And it depends on how old the home is and what you need. I mean, down in Florida, it's, do you need a new roof? Do you need new windows? And then from there, how much of the house do you want to start renovating? I mean, that's what it all comes down to. I mean, the last 10 years, it's been, let's go from Mediterranean to contemporary or transitional. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so that really leads me to our next question, which is what factors one should consider when renovate, deciding to renovate or build new? And I think that's a question for everyone here. But Ron, I mean, elaborate a little bit more. I think the big thing is, is what the budget is, what you can afford. You know, right now we're going through a very unique time in the real estate industry. We have a lack of homes, lack of supply of homes. Even if someone wants to sell their house, they can't sell their house because they have no place to go. <clears throat> we have an exorbitant increase in costs, literally on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so then you've got to just see, and this will play into the mortgage situation, if you need financing, how much can you do? How much can you buy the house for? How much can you renovate? Or if you buy a house to tear it down, and is it appropriate for the neighborhood? So there's a lot of factors that are going into this today and people are struggling with it. I love that you mentioned it is it appropriate for the neighborhood. I can't tell you how many of these really beautiful traditional South Florida neighborhoods I drive through and you're seeing a lot of these homes and then all of a sudden you just are you, you just stumble upon this one that looks very out of place for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And and that, that is a really good point. I, I love that you brought that up. I think that's really But it important. may be out of place today, mm -hmm. but two years from now, it won't be out of place. <laughs> good point. Setting the trend. Right. Setting the trend. <laughs> love that. So, yeah. Andy, maybe do you have any um, advice on what factors should be considered when renovating in, um, or building new from the legal standpoint? Is, is it Legally, is there something that should be considered differently? Well, legally, it's... Fundamentally, it's very much the same sort of factors that mm -hmm. you're going to want to consider when you're a homeowner, whether you're going to renovate or build new, you're going to basically be dealing with the important decisions of hiring the right contractor or a builder, making sure you have a contract that protects you, um, and, and getting a real understanding of what is involved legally with a project, what it takes to make proper payments under a project, and how you can protect yourself as an owner um, to make sure that you, you don't have to pay twice, because sometimes that can happen. Oh. Okay. And talking about paying, yeah. um, Peggy, <laughs> how, how, what factors would you consider from the financial standpoint? Well, I mean, as far as, you know, the bank looks at it, I mean, a renovation is, you know, leaving the majority of the existing structure and just updating and improving and making sure that there's comparable sales to support the cost of that project. Um, as far as like building new, I mean, we we see this very often where we'll, we will finance like an existing structure and then the builder will come in and tear it down and start from scratch. So it really just, I think the most important thing from a cost standpoint is if you're choosing to do a complete tear down that your, your land will support the value of, of that cost alone without, a, without an existing structure. And with having that existing structure, for instance, you're deciding to renovate, um, the, you have value in your home that you can essentially use for the renovation. Is that an advantage then maybe to can, renovating or? Well, either whether you tear down or you renovate, whatever equity you have in that property, you can apply towards the overall, you know, down payment or acquisition of the new property. Oh, very nice to know. Thank you for that information. And then of course, from the design standpoint, Carrie, can you maybe um, tell us like the different factors to consider when renovating or building new? I know space planning comes into a big factor. Yeah. Um, you get a little bit more uh, opportunity, right? With Absolutely. Well, I always say, make sure the house works for you if you're going to renovate. So if you're, and if 
you're a family, if you're a young family and you're going to grow, does the house have enough rooms or do you need to add on to the house in existing? Is the neighborhood, that's another big thing to consider, is the neighborhood right for raising a family? Is that what that client needs? What, what are your needs? Is the house going to fulfill your needs after you renovate it? And if you outgrow the house, then it's time to look for something new or possibly build new. So I take all of those things into consideration. We also, you know, kind of jump in the beginning when clients, we help realtors look for properties. So when they find something they may like, might like, they'll bring the designer out and walk through the property with them to see if that house is going to work for the client. Or they ask us a lot, what can you do with this space? <laughs> you know, what would you suggest if this is the perfect neighborhood? We love the house, but what do you think? Should we change this? Should we do that? And a renovation to us is usually kitchens, baths, pull, you know, updating the house to make it work for the family. So I would say budget is definitely number one and always has been. Is it going to work for you and your budget? Then is it going to work for the family? Is it going to function for you properly? And how can we help you as a design firm to make those changes that it'll be comfortable for you? That, that's all really good information. And I kind of want to like pivot back to Peggy for a second because she's talked a little bit about the financing options when looking at renovating or building new. Um, and are there different loan types versus when you're deciding to renovate or build new or is it kind of the same thing regardless of what you do? Well, actually, that's a great question. Um, and in the, the build new scenario, um, some builders will have inventory homes that they'll allow you to customize. And in that situation, you would take a loan at the end of construction. Um, in the other scenario, we do what's called a construction perm loan. And we base that on the plan specs, budget, and contracts. Um, and we're looking at the value you know, projected once the home is complete. Um, and, and in those two scenarios, one you close at the very beginning and one you close at the very end. Oh, construction. Okay. That's that's really interesting. And I think that everyone who is watching this video might find, you know, a lot of that information valuable just because part of making those decisions is a financial one. Um, and it's good to know how how that all works. Well, and I always say that when clients are starting this process, like probably the most important thing to do first is to find out if you're going to take financing how much of a loan you can qualify for and if you have enough funds to carry you through the remainder of your project. Very good. And I think, you know, when we had people decide to um, listen to this topic, some people propose questions to us. And some of the things that you're touching on are some of the questions that we have and people um, registered to listen to this video. And I'm going to just um, ask some of those questions right now that came from the audience, one of which was the large ticket items when deciding to build new. What is that? Is that the land or is it the labor? Ron, can you answer that for us? It's sort of everything. Okay. <laughs> um, everything starts with the land. Okay. So if they're looking to buy a home, and then to renovate or buy a home and eventually tear it down, find a builder, go through the whole process. <clears throat> um, they really then need to reach out for some professionals, okay? Any one of us, to be honest with you. It takes a team to put together a right project. <clears throat> so in our case, we do our own developments, plus we do custom homes for people who own their own lots different situations. <clears throat> Many times, the same thing as uh, we were discussing before, they may call us and say, we know who you are, you have a great reputation, we know you build in these communities, <clears throat> can you give us some advice? And we'll do that and we'll ask the same questions. What do you want? To some extent, what's your budget? <clears throat> we'll, we'll know whether they're gonna finance. Some people just pay cash and then finance after the fact, okay? And then it's a matter, in our case, we have specifications that we tell people, because mm -hmm. you know, every builder, every developer offers different things. Right. Everyone's in different price ranges, everyone builds bigger, smaller, whatever. <clears throat> so, you know, there's really uh, nothing concrete other than, <clears throat> if you're gonna renovate, there's big numbers, besides the land that you're purchasing, 
you have the roof, you have the windows, you know, you have the kitchens, you have the bathrooms, swimming pools, whatever it may be. Because if it's an older house, it's going to need a lot of work. Right. Okay. Um, so there's there's a lot to go into. If it's a new house and they go to a builder or developer and they see what they have, they have a pretty decent idea of what the house is going to look like. They've probably walked through a house or two that that builder uh, has done. But then it also takes us when we meet someone, we say, you know, we need the team, we need the architect, we need the interior designers, okay? If they work with us, we always make sure they have an attorney <laughs> to review the contract, <laughs> yes. okay? You know, I don't want anyone <laughs> signing one of our contracts if they're not represented right. by counsel. Right. And then, of course, if they need to have a mortgage and fund it, it's always good that they talk to a lender <laughs> right. to make sure that they can do what they'd like to do. So there is a whole process ahead of time, and uh, I think it <clears throat> makes sense to reach out when someone's really looking. And, um, and, and again, the same thing with realtors. A lot of the realtors, sometimes they're not familiar with the area. Right. Okay, well, we're familiar with this area. Sometimes we just need to give everybody a little guidance. Right. So, you know, we, we like to do that. And I think that you, may, you hit on a really good point. I mean, you're a builder, you're a designer, you're an attorney, you're in the um, mortgage business, but we're all advisors, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we are really good at is helping to advise our clients, whoever they might be. So we might be advising the homeowner or we might be advising the real estate agent that's working with the homeowner, but we're all advising them and we are all looking for the best interest of that homeowner. So I think that's that's a really important way to look at all of us, even though we're in different um, industries, so to speak. Um, I mean, it's the most valuable asset for most people. It's their home, you know, and when you're doing a project like this, especially if you're building one, um, you know, odds are this might be the only time in your life that you're actually doing something like this. And it's, a, it's exciting and there's a lot of unknowns. And so, you know, when you're making that kind of investment into a real important, expensive asset, you want to make sure that you've got that. And right now, it's a you. challenging time. It really is. It I mean, is. Yeah. Lack of supply and the pricing is forcing many people out. It's uh, it's very difficult. Yeah. Well, I love that you just brought that up. That was my next question. So, great lead in. How did you know? Um, but with this lack of available land um, and housing shortage, how does that factor into building new? Where, where would one go to build new? Or is that a tear down option only? Is there, where do you see yourself doing projects soon or not? Well, it's, there is really no land in this area. Mm -hmm. um, a minor little bit in Broward, very little bit in Palm Beach County. Um, <clears throat> so it's people buying homes that are existing from somebody else who are moving for whatever reason. Um, in our case, we have different developments, so we have opportunities for build a new home there. Um, but it's, uh, it, it, it's a challenging time to find the right uh, places to go. But people want to be here. You know, mm -hmm. right. People want to be in Palm Beach County. They're well, moving here a, from all over the country. Mm -hmm. I read an interesting article today on Google that Palm Beach County is now the second highest valued county in the state of Florida. Oh, I didn't know that. That's, mm -hmm. that, that, it makes sense based off what I've been seeing lately. So, well, we're seeing a lot of clients right now that are, again, coming from all over. They're mm -hmm. buying homes and knocking them down and mm -hmm. starting over, and they're coming to us to, you know, look at all of their plans ahead of time. We're getting a lot of that more now than we've had the whole time we've been here. So, it's, this last year has been incredible. So, and of course, right now, also, you know, a lot of communities that are around here, you can't knock the home down. Mm -hmm. You can't rebuild. All you can do is renovate. And, and right now, being as difficult as it is, is to go find another home that you might want to, if you could sell, when you sell yours mm -hmm. and you can move into, you know, with the escalation in prices, lots of people are sitting with a lot more equity in their home than they had a year ago. And <laughs> after two years of staring at kitchen cabinets because of COVID and they weren't able to go anywhere, they're like, you know what? I think it's about time that we do something at this place. I think that's a really good point. You know, we were you know, started this conversation off with, you know, what, what is better or, you know, what to consider, renovate or build new. But you're right, there are some communities that knocking the house down is not an option. Right. And so you have to renovate. And all the factors that you might consider may not even be a factor. You mm -hmm. might not even have the option. Peggy, how many people actually come to you and say, uh, 
want to renovate and oh I, right? I, I is that I a big this, part of the business right now it really is and i'll be honest it i've never been i've never been more um pleased that i am a construction expert because I am doing more construction lending than I've ever done in my career. Almost 90% of, of the clients I work with mm -hmm. are either building new or renovating. Um, and to Andy's point, there is a lot of equity to be had right now in people's homes and they're borrowing against it and, or even putting cash in that they may not have before because they know they're gonna get the value out right. of that project. So um, we are seeing this, I've been getting a lot of calls in the last three to four weeks for equity lines because mm -hmm. the rates are starting to increase. Mm -hmm. so, so, so your question, yes, I mean, we're seeing it more than we ever have. And even marketing to real estate agents that are you know, showing homes and saying, hey, you can do this to it. And we have a lender that will finance all those improvements for you. So it's it's been very you know, lucrative for us to do Good. that right now. Mm -hmm. And talking about financing, um, I have a question that I'm sure you understand very well. I, as a uh, not in the finance industry, don't un I don't understand the question very well. <laughs> um, what to do with clients who want an end loan but a custom home, custom built home? Is there a, any way around interest only builder draws? We may need. Around interest only builder draws. So, um, well, okay. So, and we touched on this a little while ago, as far as like, there's two different types of construction loans. One that we close as a construction loan with builder draws that you pay interest on during construction. The other is you would go to someone like Ron who has an inventory of, of homes, but will allow you to customize your plan, customize your finishes. And that's, and then you would finance that at the end of construction. Okay. All right. So that, that that question relates back to our previous conversation mm -hmm. then. Got Some it. of it changes based upon, like if we have one of our communities, they don't move into the house until there's a closing when our home is done and finished. <clears throat> and there's a title issue because we own the title to our property in our communities. If we're building a house for someone else who owns a home and they want to tear it down and they own the property, it gives everyone a different opportunity. Now they can take the construction loan because they it's their title and the bank wants to be in first position. Makes and sense. the attorney's gonna tell them how to do it. <laughs> and they're gonna insure us with but, title. Right. But you know, if we're the builder or any other builders who have developments, um, they're not gonna be able to do it until the end. And some of the bigger developers have their own financing. Right. You know, That's so true. they're real, fully vertical uh, entity in how they work. So everyone's a little different. And I think that's a good point when it comes to new construction. Maybe we'll have another panel and, and, and talk about the difference between, you know, a custom home builder versus some other types of new home construction options that are available in South Florida. Mm -hmm. But um, moving on, this is a big question with clients all the time. And Andy, I'm going to start with you because right. I know it really does start with you. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it starts with Peggy. Let's see. Mm -hmm. um, what can be done to ensure a smooth running project? Mm. It all starts with selecting the right contractor or builder. It, it absolutely does. So it really all starts with someone like Ron. Okay. You know? I mean, if you're building new, uh, okay. like Ron pointed out before, yeah. people are going to walk into other homes and see other homes mm -hmm. that they really admire. They really like the style of it. They're going to find out you know, who built this for you. Mm -hmm. And and, it, and then they'll they'll be introduced to, to Ron if, they, if it was one of Ron's homes. So that's a little easier than it is when you're doing renovations. The renovations, uh, the, there's a lot of... I mean, look, there's a lot of great contractors out there and there's a lot of contractors who are not as great. And it, it so, it, you know, I can suggest to people that when it comes to, to picking a contractor as opposed to a builder, but an actual contractor to do renovations, yet you do want to pick somebody who, who has been referred to you by someone with personal experience with them, that they had a good experience going through the project. You want someone who is going to communicate well, who's going to listen to you. Not the, And you don't want to pick the guy who just happened to keep the appointment and showed up. And, uh, you know, came in at the lowest price. I mean, well, your those, friend's cousin. Right. I mean, those are not the things you need to be focused on. Like you really need to can communication is a big part of it. And, yeah. you know, if you if, if in 
setting the appointments beforehand, you know, the, where he's where the contractor is trying to to to, you know, lure you in or, or you know, uh, impress you. If they're not keeping their promises, if they're not keeping their appointments, if they're not communicating well, if it's difficult to communicate with their office when they're supposed to be impressing you, that's going to be magnified tenfold when you're in the middle of a project. And so you really need to keep that kind of stuff in mind. And then there's places you can go online to look, make sure that, you know, people are licensed like they say that they are and uh, whether they have any complaints filed against not just their license, but in, in courts and in, in the surrounding counties. So there's a lot of places to go to to find information about contractors when you're doing a renovation. Well, you, you mentioned that the best place to start to make sure that you have a good uh, and well-run project is making sure you have a good contractor. So I'm going to... Yes. Um, Ron, can you maybe tell us what you do to, to make sure that your clients have a, a smooth running project? So when I meet somebody, the, the first thing they learn if they're going to deal with us is it's a team approach. So we have a solid team, starting with Sharon, who's our director of sales. And then we have a whole team from purchasing to sales, administration, accounting, purchasing, the whole thing. <clears throat> And after we meet with someone, they can go to our website and they can see all the different things that we've done and we can show them some different houses. The bottom line, I said to them, whether it's us or somebody else, you need to pick someone who you trust, okay? The prices aren't gonna probably be dramatically different in today's world. Um, it's who do you trust and who do you think delivers mm -hmm. and builds? Who do you think you can work with better, okay? And it's not just with me. I mean, they'll ask, you know, I say to them, do you need an interior designer? Most of them say yes. I go, well, you need to meet a few and you need to talk to them and whoever you feel the best. That's you go with. You can be, mm -hmm. in our case, we're married to these people forever. Right. Okay. First we start, we have to design the house and that takes a couple of months. Then we got to get a building permit. Now we got to build the house. The house can take anywhere from 10 to 14, 16 months, and you how big the house is. Then we give them a one-year warranty. But my one-year warranty is really like a forever warranty because any of my clients who call us, whenever they call us, we go back and help them. So we're, we're there. We're together. <laughs> so, um, and that's the kind of relationship you want. And, you know, we give them references if they want and... And we just want them to get comfortable with us. You know, I think when it's somebody's home, it becomes such a personal relationship. It's where they raise their families. It's where they sleep. It's where they have their dinners. It, it is so important, more so than any other type of business that we're in. We're in the business of creating a home for somebody. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it, it, it is just that important. Um, Carrie, what do you do to help ensure a smooth running project? Well, if they come to us, <laughs> we usually, usually during the design process, we design first. We talk, if it's a renovation, we design first. And we have relationships with contractors, being one of them, builders, contractors. But we would, um, we do refer people that we know that are licensed and insured and have done business with us before and that we trust. Because at that point, our clients are trusting us, right? Mm -hmm. They're trusting us as we become a part of their family pretty much because We've asked all the questions. We know how they live. We have to do all of that in order to design for their needs and the function of the home. So, um, you know, we build that bond, like you're saying. And, and once they trust us, then we move forward and we bring in the right team. We bring in the right contractor. Mm -hmm. We bring in the right subs. We, um, the people we buy from for any product in their home. And on top of that, because we have in-house all of these you know, different departments. We have our in-house CAD department. So we create the right design documents to hand over to the contractors and builders. So they're in the house and everything's running smooth. They know the design intent all the way through. We also have a project management software that we use and, you know, bringing the technology into it and so that we can follow all the way through the project and make sure that it's going smoothly. And if things arise, we're on it. The designer is on the project all the way through, just like your contractor and builder. And you have to create that team that works for you as a homeowner and you have to be comfortable with them. You have to trust mm -hmm. them. And, you know, one of the things we do um, at Clive Daniel, and I know Ron will say the same thing for his business is 
we're there all the way through. Just like you said, we're going to back you up 100% no matter what happens. So if we brought people in and they make a mistake and we've done it already, we bring in someone else and we fix it. <laughs> so you have to find the right team and you have to find the right team that you can trust. Thank you. And I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting how much your businesses seem to be um, so similar in that way. And I think it all goes back to just customer service. Yes, it you does. You know, I think um, every good business is in the business of customer service. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, well, I was thinking Peggy? just one really important factor um, for the people like us, we all work together with the client. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I try to do with my team here is just to communicate with them. Like if a client is nervous about something or they have a concern or, you know, I'm, I know more about them than anyone does. So I get a lot of, like, what do I do in this situation? How should I talk to this person? And, you know, I try to communicate. So Ron, um, question, how do you control cost overruns and scheduling delays with the ongoing shortages of labor and supplies? Not easily. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Uh, we are in unprecedented times. Yes. Supply chain issues, whether it be a car because of chips or furniture because there's can't get foam to stuff the pillows. You know, we are ordering things way in advance. There's a supply chain issue for literally anything that has chips. I mean, we've got appliances that are way backed up. You have air conditioning compressors, windows, all this. It's all backing up, which is also causing price increases. You know, you have lumber that's going crazy, literally through the roof. You, know, you have steel that has gone crazy. You have aluminum, you have basically all these products. Some of it is just because they don't have it to get. Some of it, COVID, they're still backed up from COVID. You still have manufacturing facilities that are not operating at 100%. They don't have people. And it's no different from some of the restaurants still. Yeah. You can't go to a restaurant, they don't have enough people. Um, so it's it, it's really causing the prices to increase. Um, we are ordering things way ahead of time. Literally, when we go in for permit, we're ordering things for the whole house. Everything. Okay? And um, the interior designers we're using, they're ordering the furniture. Okay, we'd rather have it, you'd rather store it than not have it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but it, it, it hurts. I mean, it hurts us. It hurts our clients. No one wants to know that they're paying more for something. Um, then they got to run back to Peggy and say, I need more money. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's very difficult to build on whatever you thought your budget was going to be. And uh, we have to manage it. We manage it uh, literally every day. We have a pricing meeting. We discuss it. We have the suppliers. We have the subs coming in. They don't know what to do either. It used to be where they would a different supplier would lock in a contractor 90 days, six months, maybe for the year. They're not they're being locked in for a week for the price of steel or the price of lumber. It's a heck of a way to run a business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. right now it's a very unusual way for uh, the housing industry. Peggy, I, he said that they went back to you for more money. <laughs> I, I mean, is, is that an option? Can we do that? Uh, well, it depends on what part of the, what, where we are in the process. So in the example that we're doing um, a production house where like it's a spec house for Ron and, and they're, they decide to, you know, their cost is going to be more. Well, we're not closing that loan until the end of construction. So we have the flexibility to make some adjustments. On a construction loan where we're closing at the beginning, like that's why we're so specific about the budget. And um, one of the things that I've been doing in this environment is if we have the room to do it, we build a contingency reserve into the loan mm -hmm. for cost overruns, about 10%. Okay. So, um, and if we don't do that, we, we do have requirements for the clients to have a 10% contingency reserve 
in liquid funds that we verify to make sure that they have the ability to to dip into some cash if they have a cost overrun. Um, but if if it's six months into the project and they need more money, we can't change the loan at that point. It's it's a one time close that closes at the beginning and there's no shifts mid project. You talked about insuring having a smooth running job. I mean, these are the things that we have to deal with uh, in reality right now. Um, and step one is to make sure you're dealing with the right people. But if you're an owner of a piece of property, the most important thing to to protect yourself and to make sure you have a smooth running job is to have a, a, an excellently written contract. And a good contract is going to consider the what ifs, right? I mean, a, a good contract isn't one that's so one sided in, in the owner's favor that a contractor can't reasonably operate under it and vice versa. So you can always factor in these sorts of things you know, when it comes to change orders and whether that's a change in price or a change in time. These things can be accounted for. And, and really what will keep the customer happy, even in dealing with all these delays, is communication from the builder, is communication from the contractor. Because you know, if you're promised 16 weeks on cabinets, let's say you're just doing your kitchen, 16 weeks on cabinets, now it's been 21 weeks and you haven't heard anything from the, the your contractor, <laughs> um, you're going to think that there's a problem. Right. When I mean, and it's just normal. That's just what's happening in the industry. But if no one bothers to tell you and explain that to you, then your mind starts running. Well, what does this mean? And are they really going to do the rest of the job? And maybe I should call my lawyer and find out what I can. And I get calls like that. And, yeah. and it's just, you know, if there had been better communication, it would make for a, a more smooth running project. But the contract is a, a super important part of that. I think that's the answer to every problem in the right? world, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Communication. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that, you know, I think people don't realize going into this process is the lead time that you need to even get to through those phases. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to Ron's point, we really are married to these people for a couple years, whether they renovate or build new. So it really does take a lot of patience, communication, understanding of what the client needs because it's not like they're going to close in 30 days and you're not going to talk to them again. It's, it's going to be a long drawn out right. process. So yeah, any renovation, any new build, the time frame today is dramatically longer than, than it's ever been mm -hmm. between architects being able to complete plans, building departments and trying to approve plans. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that aren't in a lot of our control that we have to deal with and keep up with the communication. Sometimes you don't have an answer. Right. You know, why is it sitting in the building department and no one's looked at it for three weeks? Yeah. Yeah. There is no answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. The other thing, like he was mentioning, lead times and things like that with, with the design team. And I know, Ron, I'm sure you do this exact same thing. So cabinetry, you've mentioned that word and mm -hmm. I went, there's a good one. Yeah. We have some companies where, yeah, it's 16 weeks. We have other companies, it's eight months. Some companies it's 12 months. So depending on what you're ordering. So clients also should be the reason I'm making this point. Clients also need to um, have open communication with your customer. Are they adamant about having something or are they okay if depending on when their time frames are, can we make adjustments in the design and satisfy you if I can get this cabinet in six months or if I can get this cabinet in 12 weeks or 16 weeks. So those changes throughout the project too. And that's where that mm -hmm. communication comes in. Are you, are you open to making some changes that will help your job run a lot quicker and smoother? And I, it, it's interesting you say that because I think pre-pandemic and this you know, timeline mm -hmm. change um, that we're now getting, well, I don't want to say getting used <laughs> to, but learning to live with, um, the changes that we would normally communicate with clients with might be value engineering. Mm -hmm. How can we reduce the cost because we, Always. you know, kind of went over budget on something else, but now it's how can we speed up the process right. and it's essentially the same thing you're 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 showing different options in order to get the same design that can get product in a little sooner yeah we have become masters at value engineering <laughs> in the last few years so we really do take the time to look for other product that's similar in the industry of course always quality but who what is what are the time, lead times our design teams are always doing that when they're working on projects because again appliances there's some appliances we're waiting year a year for mm -hmm. they're 20 they're 12 to 24 months out depending on what it is mm -hmm. 12 to 24 that's insane yeah. Yeah. are you finding that the american made product is coming in faster than 
perhaps the product made overseas. I feel like with a high-end design, a lot of people are want they want the Italian look, they right. want that European look. But if it's made in a, the USA, are you finding that that's just the the faster way to go? Is sometimes that- yes, and sometimes no. It depends on how much technology is involved because that's mm-hmm. really slowed a lot of things mm-hmm. down. Because getting parts for the the you know the computerized parts, I'm, I'm probably a much better wording than that. <laughs> The chips. The chips. The They're chips. waiting on chips for anything that is mm-hmm. run by a computer, you know, anything that's technical like that. But um, like Miele, for example, we have a house that we're doing a lot of that in and we've already waited over a year for it. So that's coming from France. So we're, you know, we're still waiting for that. It hasn't even shipped yet. It hasn't left France. So then you're waiting. How long is it going to take to to come over here on a freighter, you know, mm-hmm. and getting that into the United States? And those ships are still backed up. So there's a lot of variables there. Okay, but so it's not anything just anything made in the states. If you're doing the job here, try to get as much as you can made in the United States. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, it's it's our job to write to check up on those things and make sure that that still is something that's going to be coming. It's a it's a constant. Yeah, it's the components. It's just a, you know, it's it's a very challenging. <clears throat> and again, a lot of our suppliers, they don't have some of the answers because they're not. They're not sure what their, you know, their timeline is from some of the manufacturers. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, one very important thing from a lending standpoint, what, where we've had to make adjustments to accommodate these timelines is where we w- used to only fund on completed work. Um, now we're allowing our builders right. to um, get deposits as they're giving them because so many of the products and the materials have to be ordered so far in advance. So, Carrie, you mentioned a little bit about um, a project management software that you use, but can you elaborate what other technologies being implemented in the design and construction, pre-construction, um, and interior design with you? So basically, are we talking smart home? <laughs> so well, all of it. Yeah. Any so kind of I mean, with with design, there's there's two ways to answer that question, I guess. So clients, the way we use technology in the interior design side is through our CAD creating our documents and and presentations and all of those things and doing renderings. And our CAD department here does amazing renderings, which means we are drawing the room and making it look like a photograph. So we do walkthroughs where it looks like a movie. We do all of that that stuff to kind of um, communicate to the client what the the end result is going to be of the design. So they're seeing what they're getting before they actually get it. So we're using a lot of technology now doing that presentation mode. So the clients are really comfortable by the time it, you know, it's time to make their purchases and move forward with the design. It's also great because we can communicate to the builders and contractors and subcontractors easily through that. They can get a clear vision of what we're looking for. And then our design documents through CAD drawings. But the flip side of that would be more, I think, Ron's expertise when it talks about smart homes that, you know, because clients are wanting us to implement this in the design and bring in, you know, the subs that can that can do that with the home. But if it's a new build, I think Ron's better to speak on that. But with with us, we bring in technology with subs to make a smart home work for them. So automatic window treatments, you know, can I be in New York and on my phone, turn the lights, turn the lights on and make it look like somebody's still living there or computerize things and I can make sure I draw my shades are drawn or the front door is locked or the oven's not on. I mean, you can do anything. Right now, we're working on a large project where, you know, they're running everything off of their phone, even their even their ovens. It's crazy. So you probably well, know more about implementing it. The, yeah, I mean, that's interesting. But having said that, are some of the design trends changing? Oh, yeah, well. You know, as far as interiors, I mean, our exteriors mm-hmm. are changing dramatically. I mean... They want everything. You know, it's we, we went <laughs> from Mediterranean to, and we do either transitional or contemporary. No one really understands what the difference is. Right. It's a lot of it's just roof design and things like that. But people want cleaner. Mm-hmm. They want cleaner in the architecture. I think they want cleaner in, in the interior design. design. More um, open floor plans. Mm-hmm. And then there are there is technologies. Look, I have some clients who just say, I want a light switch. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. And then we have the others who say, no, I want to boom, 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 boom. And I want this. I want the lights to come down. I want the curtains to do this. You know, uh, the pool, the this. Pool, the they they <laughs> want everything. Okay. Um, 
And there's a number of different companies doing it, and to what extent you're doing it, it's, um, you know, and then we, with all new products also, uh, people have asked us about sustainability and going green and things. You know, and what we do now is, you know, you have your roofs, and underneath the roofs we spray foam insulation to stop the heat coming in right from the roof. And we're not putting the you know, fiberglass insulation just over the drywall. Um, you know, then you're running your air conditioning through air conditioned space. It's all technologies. It's all different things. Our windows. Our windows can be bigger pieces of glass today, even with our hurricane code. And that's important because, look, we're pretty much in Palm Beach County. You know, we build pretty much everywhere in Palm Beach County. Um, we do some Northern Broward where we have our, have our little Harvard development in Deerfield. And then Delray, we've just introduced our Delray Ridge community of 14 custom homes in a gated community, which is sort of new for Delray Beach. And Ada Lots actually can have basements, something else that's uh, pretty unique. So, um, but we're all throughout Palm Beach County, pretty much from Jupiter all the way down. We entertain wherever it may be. We like to work with different designers. And um, whoever people want to be and they see what we've done, we want to meet them. We want to talk to them and help guide them and do the best we can do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, going back a little bit to technology, I, I know that the banking industry has changed dramatically. Can you explain a little bit about how, what, how you guys are implementing technology? Well, one of the things that we've been at US Bank, we've been implementing is our loan portal, which is a, a fully like communicative piece of soft web-based software that we do everything through. Like we take the application there, we send them the disclosures, we can pull their income information for them. They can connect their assets electronically versus providing, you know, 80 pages of bank statements. Um, there's a lot of little things that we do to make the with technology to make the process much easier and less invasive to the client. Um, even now we're doing um, what we call our hybrid e-close. So basically like if we were doing a closing with Andy where we wouldn't send him the entire loan package, like up to three days prior to the closing, we're sending all of the loan documents to the client all of the documents that they can sign electronically, they do. And then we just send a handful of documents to Andy that would need to be notarized and recorded. So it, it really shortens the time frame, you know, that he has clients in his office. It gives the clients more lead time to read their documents and get comfortable with them and then maybe ask their lawyer questions. So it to me, it's just made the process more consumer friendly um, on every level. Maybe it starts in right in the beginning. We try to write a contract for a new home. We used to have all the papers and used to. Mm -hmm. Now you got doctor sign. Mm -hmm. yep. Bing, 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 bing. We use that too. I'm driving in the car, I got to kind of go, done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the world has changed, will continue to change, hopefully for the better. Yeah. Well, we I get through our challenges and our clients are all over the world now, right? right? So these are third homes sometimes down here. So they're in California, docu signing the documents that we need. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So a lot of things are better, easier. We all face our challenges, and so, Andy, is are you are you using any new technologies other than DocuSign that they mentioned? Anything else? And, and you want everyone to click this off this video off right now. You want to hear about <laughs> how exciting it is to draft a contract? <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, to not bore anyone with how the sausage is made, um, yeah, I mean we have uh, we have some good software that allows us to customize construction contracts either. Okay. For the for the owner or for the contractor, depending on you know who our client is and, and just how tilted one way or another, we're, we're drafting certain uh, certain provisions. So, what is on the horizon for um, Wyman Legal Solutions mm. and what company as a whole, you in general, any yeah any things for 2020? 2023? Yeah, sure. So uh, what's on the horizon for us is we're uh, we're looking to continue to expand. We have two attorneys at our office now. We're looking for a third uh, who has a, you know, preferably a, a, a lot of experience in construction related work. Our construction work that we do is is kind of split pretty evenly between homeowners, 
and contractors. And uh, some of it involves just helping them through contracts and getting a project done. And, you know, unfortunately, a bunch of it involves litigation. And so, uh, you know, what, what we're trying to focus on though is we're trying to get the word out to the people and get in front of them at a point in time where we could be the most helpful. I can't tell you how many times people come to us after everything has fallen apart, right? right. The project is taking too long. It's costing too much. The work is lousy. My contractor won't come back. Um, you know, and then when I ask them to see, well, okay, well, let's, let me give you advice. Let's see what your contract looks like. And it's like, a, it's a, it's a, it's a one sheet and it has some numbers. And I mean, it's, it's something that is just, you know, I have to deliver some, some tough news to people that, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe you've got some rights here. We could try to enforce you, but it's going to be real expensive. And, you know, and I, I don't like to point out that they, the mistakes they made along the way. So if we can get into a position where we can help people up front and, and, see these projects through to completion with them in a way that is, you know, uh, gets, uh, they're so happy with, as opposed to trying to resuscitate a bad job at right. the end. Um, it would make, uh, <laughs> it would make my life a lot easier, a lot more enjoyable the work that we do instead of having to, to chase after people who haven't done things the right way. So right. we're trying to get it in front of those people more frequently so we could do less of the litigating and more of the, the cooperative work. Well, Thank you for that. And if I hear of a construction attorney looking for a new position, Please. I will let you know. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, Peggy, what, what's on the horizon for U.S. Bank? Well, I mean, U.S. Bank is in full growth mode. Um, we just acquired Union Bank in California. So we're expanding our, our footprint on the West Coast. Um, we are expanding our home lending footprint here in Florida. And in the Southeast, um, we're hiring loan officers. So anyone looking for a job, give me a call. Um, <laughs> but really it's just about like growing our team and, bu and building and capitalizing on the relationships that we have built over the last five years here in Palm Beach County. Awesome. And Carrie, uh, what's on the growth or horizon mode for Clive Daniel? We have some really exciting news. So I don't know, a lot of people have heard about it, but the buzz is we are opening a brand new showroom in Sarasota, Florida. It's going to be, we believe the opening because of building and construction and permitting. <laughs> we believe it's gonna be opening early summer, probably sometime end of May, beginning of June sometime in Sarasota. Um, it's I believe a 70,000 square foot showroom there. So. We have our 80,000 square foot showroom in Naples. Then we opened Boca, which is 70,000. And we're going to have another 70,000 in Naples or in Sarasota. So we're really excited. Um, Daniel's been over there most of the time trying to get that store going. So Clive Daniel, if people don't know who we are, Clive is the father. Daniel is the son, um, Clive and Daniel Lubner, and they own our company. So they are, we have about 25 to 30 interior designers in each showroom. So we do fold interior design, but we're also a huge retail showroom. So kind of a hybrid, but we're very excited that we're going to be opening in Sarasota in 2022 because it's, I, I can't tell you how excited we are. <laughs> we've had a record few years um, during COVID, which seems impossible, but we've had some wonderful years, wonderful uh, business these last few years. So we're excited to open the third showroom. Awesome. And um, Ron, what do you have on the horizon for Elish Builders? Well, like I said earlier, we are, um, just really releasing our uh, Delray Ridge project in um, off of Swinton in Delray Beach. Very exciting. Um, we are um, thrilled about that, something totally different. The homes are in the range from basically 3.3 to over $4 million, uh, 4,700 to 5,200 square feet, and another 1,400 if you want the basement. And is that available for sale now? It is homes? available for sale. We finally started our land development after many months with municipalities, um, but we're doing all that. We, we're still building in pretty much all the golf courses in state communities. We're building on the water. Um, we're there. We are talking to people literally on a daily basis and trying to help them out to build them their dream home. <coughs> and that's what we continue to do. And we have a lot of great clients. We're looking for some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. I really enjoyed the conversation. I think everyone looking at um, this video would find some useful 
information as far as whether or not to renovate or build new. And um, I'm, I feel smarter having <laughs> listened to all the input that you guys provided. So thank you so much. And uh, I would love to, you know, continue the conversations and, and help South Florida grow and find a home for everyone that's looking. Well, thanks for having thank us. You. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Clive Daniel Home is celebrating our 10th anniversary. The secret to our success is simple. The entire team, past and present. It's who our people are that helped make this happen. When we think back over the last decade, it's really inspiring to think of all the talent that we have under this roof. What they've been able to create is nothing short of spectacular. Great support staff that we have. Great delivery people. Outstanding teamwork. A decade of design? It's been unbelievable. We're not as far from our goals as it may appear because things are coming back, making now the time to move forward. At US Bank, our goal is getting you to where you really want to be because side by side, there's no telling how far you'll go. US Bank, we'll get there together.